AG Aonuma has been running the Zelda series for a very long time, you know, 15, 20 plus years. It's been an adventure with AG Aonuma, and he's helped lead some of the best games in Zelda history, whether it was Majora's Mask or Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. You guys know the drill at this point, all the handheld entries. He's been running the Zelda series for a long time, taking over for Miyamoto ages ago. But here's the thing. Nothing lasts forever. And Aonuma is not going to be the producer of the Zelda series, the person who runs the entire franchise forever. Right now, he and the rest of the core Zelda team are hard at work on the next generation Zelda game, which probably is, you know, three, maybe four years away. And the thing about talking about that time frame is I am a firm belief that the next generation Zelda game will essentially be A.G. Aonuma's last as the man running the Zelda franchise. Now, I want to be clear, he'll probably still get general producer credits in several future Zelda games after and might even be used as an advertising tool in the way Shigeru Miyamoto was. If you guys remember when Twilight Princess was revealed all the way back in 2004, who unveiled the game? It was Miyamoto on stage unsheathing the Master Sword and swinging it around to massive applause. But the thing is, Miyamoto had very little to do with Twilight Princess. He was just a general producer of the series at that time, and it was really Aonuma's baby. But here's the thing. Even when we go back to those days, they valued Miyamoto as a marketing arm for Zelda. I think Aonuma will still be a marketing arm for the series for a bit, but he's going to slowly fade into the background uh, as he goes on to do other things things now why is this the case and how do we know this is all set up well for starters he's going to be in his mid 60s by the time the next zelda game comes out i know it's crazy because he doesn't look that old he looks like he might be a man in his 40s or 50s but he's not he's 61 years old so he's going to factually be in his mid 60s by the time the next generation zelda came out now when we talk about the producer role and who's going to take over and then who's going to become the new director of Zelda, because the director position is just as important as the primary producer position, we have to kind of look at how Aonuma got the gig. So before he became that producer of the series, he actually was co-director on Majora's Mask, and then he solo directed Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. He took over the producer role from Miyamoto, technically beginning with Phantom Hourglass. Miyamoto was still involved, of course, and was above A.G. Aonuma, but that was only as a general producer. That role is just who's ever in charge of the entire video game division internally at Nintendo, and they get general producer roles in every game Nintendo releases. Executive producers, which are above general producers, are members of the board that represent the video game division. For Zelda, Miyamoto moved away from that general producer to executive beginning with Breath of the Wild. So I just wanted to kind of note when we bring up the different roles, what they actually mean. General producers and executive producers aren't really hands-on with the games. They do very sparing, like yearly checks on how a game is doing. So they're not that involved. Uh, the lead producer and the lead directors are obviously who handle a majority of that work. Now, again, it, it's just important to note how this all happened because, you know, Aonuma got his, you know, attempt at Majora's Mask as a co-director by his work he did in Ocarina of Time. He was a dungeon designer in Ocarina of Time, and that's what gave him a shot to be eventually become director. So that's really cool. Now, as the producer of the Zelda series, A.G. Aonuma has actually overseen eight brand new Zelda games. That's right, eight games that he has his name on as producer. Now, one thing about Aonuma, and one reason why he's probably more willing to uh, step off at this point, is he once said in an interview with Nintendo Power that he could never leave the Zelda series without making a game he felt surpassed Ocarina of Time. 
While we don't know what it means to him to surpass Ocarina of Time, he did helm Breath of the Wild, and that did fundamentally change the entire future of the Zelda franchise. It won Game of the Year, it's the best-selling game in the franchise, and it's one of the highest-rated games ever released. So if there ever was a game that you could argue topped Ocarina of Time, that's the one. Aonuma has also expressed in various interviews over the years that he would like to make some games that aren't related to the Legend of Zelda. Just keep that in mind, because chances are he'll want to do that before he retires or whatever he ends up doing long haul at Nintendo. Now, we got to talk about Fujibayashi, because Hidomero Fujibayashi is likely to be Eiji Aonuma's replacement as producer. He is 10 years younger than Aonuma, and the chances are that he would like to transition away from being a game director before the age of 60. The director role for Zelda games is the most time-consuming role at making a Zelda game. Fujibayashi originally came to Nintendo from Capcom, believe it or not, where he was directing the Capcom-made Zelda games in Oracle of Ages, Seasons, and the Minish Cap. That's right, before he ever worked at Nintendo, he was already a director for Zelda games, which was very unique. However, here's the thing, despite being the director of those games, when he started working at Nintendo, his very first gig wasn't going to be as a director of a game, wasn't gonna be as the lead director. They made him an assistant director. Keep that keep that role in mind. An assistant director for Phantom Hourglass. Now, at the time, they didn't call the role assistant. They called it sub-director. But I looked up the difference between sub-director and assistant director. There really isn't one. It's just the terminology they used at the time. They later changed it to assistant director instead of sub-director. Anyways, that's where he started out. And he actually didn't go on to have anything to do with Spirit Tracks. He immediately, after his work on uh, Phantom Hourglass, went on to become the director for Skyward Sword. So he was working on Skyward Sword while someone else was working on Spirit Tracks. Now, again, it's important to note that clearly when they brought him in from Capcom, they did it with the idea he would be the future director of Zelda games, but they didn't want him to just throw him into the fire. So they wanted to train him, hence the sub-director role. Now, why Fujibayashi was chosen over Daikai Iwamoto, I, I don't know. And I'm probably butchering his name because I've never practiced saying it. Uh, but it's never been addressed in public interviews. And, and we need to talk about this because Daikai was the lead director on Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. He was also the lead director when they were working on Wind Waker HD. And he went on to supervise for A Link Between Worlds and Triforce Heroes. He also supervised Age of Calamity, believe it or not. Uh, his director days did not entirely pass him by either just because Fujibayashi got promoted uh, because he was an assistant director for Breath of the Wild. Again, a role that we're saying is kind of important and also the director behind Skyward Sword HD. And he's listed as an assistant producer on the most recent Zelda release in Tears of the Kingdom. But here's the thing about Iwamoto. Uh, it, it's interesting because he, Aonuma, and Fujibayashi are essentially the Triforce of people that make Zelda what it is today. They all are extremely important and have been extremely important to Zelda for a long time. Uh, so it's interesting to think about, you know, we're talking about you know, Aonuma stepping down, Fujibayashi stepping into his role. What does that mean for Iwamoto? Why wouldn't he just become like the primary director? Or why wouldn't he become maybe the producer with Fujibayashi staying as the primary director? Uh, well, here's the thing. Chances are both are going to be very involved with Zelda after Aonuma moves on, or at least moves on to a way less hands-on role as a general producer. It's even possible Numa is a general producer on the next generation game with Iwamoto as the producer and Fujibayashi as the director, although probably not. Uh, Iwamoto is three years older than Fujibayashi and will almost be Aonuma's age, like today, by the time Aonuma steps down. Uh, Fujibayashi has been the one directing Nintendo's current direction with the Zelda series. So he's really best suited to train to replace his director role. And that training appears to already be done. So Iwamoto probably still going to be involved. But Fujibayashi is probably going to be the one running the entire direction of the future of Zelda. So Tears of the Kingdom had an assistant director as well named Yuya Sato. Now, the unfortunate thing about this person is there's not a whole lot known about him publicly. He hasn't been conducted in any interviews. And despite digging, I can't even find out what age he happens to be. 
I can only go by game credits at this point. And what we do know is he first began work or was credited for work at Nintendo in 2007 as a coordinator for the Mario and Sonic series. And he was involved with a bunch of those games. And then besides that franchise, he did become a level designer at one point for New Super Mario Brothers U and Super Luigi U along with Yoshi's New Island. Now, what's interesting is that's kind of a, in, a weird bring up in Nintendo because right after that, he moved exclusively over to Zelda beginning with Breath of the Wild. Now, for Breath of the Wild, he was actually a big uh, designer for the game. And if you think about that, it's actually uh, a lot like A.G. Numa for Ocarina of Time. His designer role was actually gameplay designer for Breath of the Wild and also gameplay designer for the Champions Valley DLC. Now, what's interesting is that for Tears of the Kingdom, he got promoted due to his work on Breath of the Wild, just like Aonuma was, to an assistant director for Tears of the Kingdom. Now, Breath of the Wild had an assistant director as well. That was Iwamoto, which isn't too surprising. Seems natural. He has directed Zelda games himself in the past. Uh, but interestingly enough, most Zelda games do not have assistant directors. And what we got to remember is back in the day, Nintendo had two Zelda teams. One seemingly was ran by Iwamoto. The other one was ran by Aonuma. And then Fujibayashi took over, et cetera, et cetera. So that was back when there was two different Zelda te teams. There's only one in-house Zelda team at this time. So they don't really necessarily need two lead directors anymore, but Iwamoto is still important and still obviously has been taking over projects like Wind Waker HD, Skyward Sword HD. If there's an Ocarina of Time remake, don't be surprised if like Iwamoto is the director or producer for that, that remake. It seems to be a lot of what they're having him handle or a lot of these side projects, but he's still obviously involved with the main games as well. He's been involved with Zelda a long time. Nintendo would be silly to not use his expertise in all of their Zelda games. Anyways, interestingly enough, when you actually dig around, most Zelda games don't have assistant directors. In the very early days, Miyamoto and Takahashi were sort of co-directors for the franchise before Takahashi went on to mostly become the face that ran Mario. Uh, and he's since been promoted to a general producer at Nintendo. So he's now listed on all of Nintendo's biggest games. That includes Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Now, Yuya Sato, uh, we don't have a lot of direct information, but just based on his game making history, I think it's safe to say he's probably much younger than Iwamoto and Fujibayashi. It wouldn't surprise me if he's in his 30s or 40s at this point. And it's notable that before Fujibayashi took over as lead director for Zelda, even though he did direct the Capcom games, he too was an assistant director to Iwamoto. Now, given the ages respectfully of the current Triforce, of people running Zelda, it does make a lot of sense to start training up a younger developer at Nintendo to eventually just take over as that lead director. Given the assistant director role he got at the last Zelda game, it does seem that Yuya Sato is indeed the one being trained to take over, likely earning that spot with his game design work in Breath of the Wild. Again, similar to how Aonuma did it with his work in Ocarina of Time. Now look, we obviously don't know if Aonuma is going to be stepping down after this next Zelda game. And he probably will still remain involved somewhat, just like Miyamoto's kind of on the fringe been involved with all of his little pets over the years, whether it was Mario or Zelda or Pikmin and all the rest. But my thing here is there is a clear succession line happening at Nintendo. And whether it's this next game or Aonuma sticks around for one more, uh, pushing himself to 70 years old before he dips out, it's very clear that he's going to be stepping down soon, that Fujibayashi is likely going to take over. And then this Yuya Sato guy is really the young uh, up and coming person. They're trying to get ready to take over as obviously the director and probably eventually say 20 years from now, the actual producer of the Zelda series. Again, Miyamoto talked about, uh, he was asked in a investors Q and A earlier this year, Miyamoto was talked about um, kind of a legacy question about how he handles, like, is he still involved with making games and how has he handled transitioning to younger developers? And he talked about how Nintendo has done a very good job training up young developers and how much Miyamoto isn't really that involved in the game making process anymore. And what was fascinating about that is it just really sparked my mind with, hey, he used to be the guy, he created and ran the Zelda series and he transitioned it from himself to Aonuma. And Aonuma, I, I believe right now, is transitioning from himself to Fujibayashi. 
And, but to do that, you have to have the next director ready to go. It all starts by training up a new director to be the lead creative on the game series. And right now, Yuya Sato seems to be the guy tasked at, since he was an assistant director and he started out, you know, humble beginnings at Nintendo, but earned that spot with his work on Breath of the Wild. I think he's the one being trained to be the new creative lead. I wouldn't even be surprised if, well, he might just be an assistant director again on the next generation Zelda game, if he's actually involved with some of the interviews. That's something to pay attention to because whenever they start involving others in the interviews, that's usually when the baton is being passed. See, Aonuma wasn't doing interviews back during Ocarina of Time, but he was for Majora's Mask. And Fujibayashi wasn't really doing a lot of interviews back for Phantom Hourglass, but he was for Skyward Sword. So it's important to just pay attention to what's happening. They've been putting Fujibayashi, by the way, on camera a lot more, showing up to interviews a lot more, really ingraining that name because yeah, he's probably the next person to take over as the face of the franchise. So if Yuya Sato starts to get a little airtime with the next Zelda game and in, in, in interviews and stuff, you'll know that it's because, yeah, he's going to start to become the actual director of the series. All right, folks, uh, we're going to leave it at that. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Uh, do you think I'm on base? Because uh, I'm, I'm very, very confident that the next generation Zelda game is going to be really, really good, but also Aonuma's last because Aonuma has other things he wants to do. And by golly, he's earned it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I will catch you in the next video.